All right, what is up, YouTube? So, this is going to be my second part to my FX um, parts kind of inventory project that I've been working on. Um, during the first video, I created basically my um, customer, add customer scene, and I created a button on my main menu that allowed me to go to that scene. Um, other than that, nothing else. There was really no functionality to the screen. Um, and at that point, I hadn't even created a, a model or a class for my customers. So this video is going to be a little bit different than the first video. Admittedly, the first video was a little bit um, lengthy and kind of difficult to watch as I kind of struggled through coding a lot of this and I had to kind of go through and, and cut a lot of parts out. So for this video, I already have... Um, all of the code written and I'm basically just going to do an overview of the code. I think this will um, be a lot faster and a little bit easier to follow. Um, if anybody you know watches this though and and would prefer to actually have the, the long videos of me writing out the code during the video then um, let me know and I can I can also try to um, do that. But I think me personally watching videos I I prefer just to kind of have an overview. Most of the time, I'm just trying to learn a portion of it. I don't. I'm not usually following along, building the whole thing. But hopefully, this video will allow um, the viewers to do either or. So, without further ado, let me show you guys what we got going on here. So, if you watched the first video, you saw me create my add customer menu controller class, and you also saw me create the add customer menu um, .fxml file which was just created through scene builder <clears throat> and what that basically did was allow me to go in and I had this button here and I was able to show you this scene now in that example I did not have my tables working as you can see here I now have a product in my top table this is the only product that's really in my inventory at the moment and that product is in there because I've pre-populated um, these two tables basically I've added one part and one product to my inventory um, on start of the of the program that way I don't have to continue to add parts and products when I try to show an example anyway in order to do all of that what I did first was create my customer class so I have a package here called model and that's where I basically put all my components for my program. So I have my customers, I have my in-house parts, my inventory, my outsourced parts, I have my part and then my product. And like I said in the first video, this part class is the only one that's a little different, which it's an abstract class. And that's because in-house and outsourced both pull from this class. So they're both parts but there are different types of parts and that's why class that's why my part class had to be abstract and then my package for controllers obviously that is where all my controller classes live that's what's giving all the functionality to my fxml and all my fxml files are in my view package and then my main file which is what runs starts the program that is in um, my actual um, pjc javafx um, class or package this was just what my instructor kind of wanted me to name it that's why it's named that but it could be named anything so let's take a look here at my customer class this was uh, pretty pretty simple straightforward I made a customer class I only added two parameters well three technically um, I have my observable list of associated products and then I have uh, an integer ID and a string for the name. This is kind of my um, constructor for it. And it only has the ID and the string name. Um, this doesn't have to be a parameter inside of the constructor. We'll actually add, we'll, we'll, that's kind of why I created this method down here. So moving on to the methods, I have an add associated product method down here, which just adds um, whatever product you have in here to my associated products and then I have another um, method down here that gets the associated products so this is set up very similar to how I have my actual product class set up 
um, except for my product class has an associated parts instead of products. And then after I created my, my actual customer class, then I needed to basically update my inventory class in order to accept customers and hold customers. So inside of my inventory class, I simply just added another observable list of customers. And that's, I think, pretty much all I really had to worry about adding inside of here. Um, I'm not sure if I added anything down here at the bottom. I think the only other thing I added was this method at the very bottom, which was to get all customers. So another kind of getter method for my customers if I ever want to look them up or put them in some type of, um, some type of scene that I can actually view them. And then after that, I went back to my add customer menu controller class and this is where I started to kind of put together my tables. Um, so the top table you can see here um, is now not grayed out. It's actually going to, it's actually being used. So in order for me to basically put all of my um, products into that top table, which that top table in my scene um, if you guys remember from the beginning when I opened it up, is essentially just a table of, that's going to hold all of my products. And then I can select from that table which products I want to associate with my customer. So in the bottom here, in my initialize statement, um, I have my add product top table, and then I just have set items, um, and I use that get all products method in my inventory class. So I just set the item to the top table to all the products that are currently in my inventory upon initializing this. Um, and that, that's pretty much it. These uh, four lines down here are basically what sets up each column. So this is going to add those um, technically to your table, but they won't show up unless you actually set these cells um, and this is how you set the cell. So you'll have the name of the cell or the column. Um, so my first one is product ID column, and then it just sets cell factory, new property value factory, and then you're gonna put in basically the string that, um, the string that identifies what parameter of that item. So you remember that I have a, a table. So this table is a table of products. So you want the parameter of the product that's going to go inside of that cell. So for my first one, it's ID, and the second one, it's going to be the name. And then the third one, it says stock, which I believe is what I named the parameter. However, I think the column is actually labeled inventory. But stock, inventory, same thing. And then price. And then for my second um, table, you can see I don't have anything adding to my second table because that's going to be done later on. I do, however, have to have each cell set up so that it knows what it's going to be putting in that cell. So these are just for my bottom table. Um, one other thing I will go over while I'm here in this portion of code is this override command. So inside, when I wrote this code, actually, it was giving me an error initially for the override, which I didn't really quite understand. But essentially what the issue was is I forgot this bit of code here, this implements initializable. So if you don't have that, then it'll give you uh, an error with the override. Um, yeah, so I just figured I would mention that in case anybody else um, runs into something like that. And then now we will go over how we basically move the products from the top table to the bottom table. So if you go into here and you go into your customer, um, you can see this is going to be the customer. I will add something to auto generate an ID. Uh, I forgot to put that in there, but I'll do that in my next video. So you can type your name, and then what you want, what you can do here is there'll be more products, um, but you can select your product. You hit add, and you can see that moves down to the bottom. And if you hit add again, it'll add the same product multiple times. Um, that is something that was 
I mean, it was something that was useful in uh, my product class because if you have the same part, sometimes you'll have the same, you'll have multiple parts or the same part multiple times inside of a product. I don't know that that makes sense with products into customers. So I may end up, um, I may up, may end up changing this so that you can only add uh, a single product or a add a product a single time. But for now, it takes on it'll take multiple products. Um, now in order to do that, the way that I set it up here is uh, I created this add selected product. So when I did this, I did it a certain way just to, in case I wanted to add um, a modification menu to my customer. Uh, both my product and my part classes and scenes have um, they have a modification um, scene where you can basically change change parts or products that are already created. So I'll probably end up doing that with my customer as well. So with that in mind, um, I create a local um, object here, product object, and then I basically um, get that I basically set initialize this product, this local product that I created to whatever is selected in my top table. So you can see here, this is the name of my top table. And then it just says get selection model, get selected item. So that is going to set this my product equal to whatever the product that is selected in my top table is. So that holds that for you. And then after that, I have my customer here, which is a customer object that I created inside of my add customer menu class here. I just added it up here at the top and then I just created a new customer and I gave it a random ID and name. And the reason I have this here is because I need a way basically to take this product um, object that was selected from my top table and then basically add it to my bottom table. But my, my bottom table um, isn't going to take just like, I'm not going to be able to add directly uh, to it using my, um, I'm not going to be able to add directly to my table with a product. I have to kind of add um, an observable list of some sort. And that's how you set, um, that's how you set your tables. So you can see down here where I have set my top table, it says um, inventory.getAllProducts. That getAllProducts method basically returns like um, a list of um, a list of objects. So the easiest way for me to do it was just to create this my product object and then add the associated products. Um, and the product that I'm adding is this one that I just created, which is the one that was selected in the top table. So now that I have a customer object here that has the associated product of the one that is selected, then I can add, um, I can here just add my name for the bottom table, do set items to my customer dot get associated products. So this customer object here has the method, um, just like all my other customers, to get associated product. So I just use that getter method and and use that to set my bottom table um yeah so that is that is essentially how i did it i'm sure there are plenty of other ways to do it but this is the way i chose to do it and it works pretty good um outside of that i don't think that i did much else you can see here i added this add selected product method um to my on action event handler here so this on action add product to customer. This is basically what's going to happen when I click that add product um, button in my scene. So on the action of me clicking that button, it performs this method, which I created up here and just takes whatever is selected in the top table and then sets it to the bottom table. I think that is pretty much everything that I'm going to go over in this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys have, are having fun kind of following along. Let me know if there's uh, anything you guys would like me to do differently in these videos. Um, and I will see you guys again. I'll create another video to this series. Um, and 
hopefully finish up everything I need, um, at least finish up the ad customer. So um, at the end of my third video, I will be able to actually save our customers and um, maybe I will create a scene also that kind of just gives us a view of what customers we have in inventory. But that is it for this video. You guys have a great day.